Number 62. A commercial mercury vapor analyzer can detect in air concentrations of gaseous HG atoms, which are poisonous, as low as 2 times 10 to the negative 6 milligram per liter of air. At this concentration, what is the partial pressure of gaseous mercury if the atmospheric pressure is 733 torr at 26 uh, degrees Celsius? Okay. So, once again, gas, you know, gas chapter, the easiest way is to list out everything that you got and try to come up with the formula that will fit your unknowns and what you have, right? So, the question is asking for what's the partial pressure of just the mercury? Remember, partial pressure means just the pressure of mercury. So, when they say what's the partial pressure, so that partial pressure, they're basically just asking for what's the pressure of just the mercury. Okay. So that's what we're trying to find out here. Just the pressure of the mercury. Now they're telling us that the atmospheric pressure is 733 torr. Now the atmospheric pressure, the pressure in the atmosphere, that's the total pressure, right? That's all the pressure in all the atmosphere. So we have a pressure and maybe I'll just say total of 733 torr. And the temperature is at 26 degrees Celsius. Okay. And now they, t they tell us just like a standard uh, amount here, right? They're saying that, you know, this commercial vapor, uh, mercury vapor analyzer can detect concentrations of gaseous atoms as low as this milligram per liter of air. Now, maybe we could write this down, right? They're saying basically that we have Hg atoms, and that equals 2 times 10 to the negative 6 milligrams per liter. Okay. That's all they give us. So we got to work with something, right? We're looking for a partial pressure of Hg, and they give us a total pressure, they give us a temperature, and they give us this information, right? Hmm, let's think. There's no duplicates, so that means the combined gas law is out. So I got two other formulas, mainly. I got the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, and I got the der derivation of it, PMM equals DRT. But they're not asking for molar mass or density, so chances are that one's not the right one. So I'm going to try to make it fit for PV equals NRT. Now remember, all the units are locked into the R value. The R value is 0 0.0821, right? And the units would be ATM times liter divided by mole times Kelvin. So let's see. The pressure. They gave me a total pressure. Okay. So first things first is that this has to be an ATM, right? The units of R has to be an ATM. They gave it to me in TOR. So the first thing that I would do is I would have to convert this TOR value into ATM. Now, there's been tons of times where, you know, I usually give a uh, little cheat sheet down here saying what's equal to what. But remember, guys, that one ATM equals 760 TOR. So the shortcut way, if you guys just want to remember from TOR to ATM, all you have to do is just divide by 760. So from TOR to ATM, you divide by 760. If you wanted to go back from ATM to TOR, that's times 760. So let's see what we get. I'm just going to pull this out. And I get 7... 7 733 divided by 760, and I'm not going to round here, but I get a lot of, uh, oops, I accidentally did multiplication. I saw the number and I said, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to say 0 0.96447. I try not to round because this is not the final answer. So 0.96447. Okay. Now, if you're dealing with a total pressure, 
That means that all these other ones, volume and moles, they have to be for total as well. So this formula is great because you can do it for total things and you could do them for individual parts. But since I have more information about, you know, what's going on in the total, I'm going to do it that way. Now the volume, hmm, the volume's got to be in liters and it's got to be the total volume. Now you might say, Christina, I don't see a volume here, but this was tricky. The only key thing that they told us was down here. They said that the HG atoms was as low as 2.10 to the negative 6 milligrams of liters of air. Air is the total. It's the atmosphere, right? In the air, there are tons of different particles. So this is actually the total. What is the number that goes next to here? Yeah, it's just one, just one liter. You see that? So they said two times 10 to the negative six milligrams per liter. That just means that there's one liter. So the, the volume that I have is really one liter. So I actually have that value. So pressure is good. Volume's good. N. Did they tell us anything about the total moles? Because this N stands for moles, and we have to say that it's a total. Mm, no. So I'm going to find this out. The R value we have, and the temperature has to be in Kelvin. They gave it to us in Celsius, of course. Of course they did. So we just have to convert Celsius into Kelvin, but that's just plus 273. So 26 plus 273, I get 299. <laughs> Every time I see 299, I think of that commercial, 299. Anyway, <laughs> so we have the temperature. So basically, the first thing is, is that we're going to solve for the total number of moles in the atmosphere. So let's, let's go for it. So 0.96447 times by the one equals the number of moles, which I'm just going to say is X, times 0 0.0821, and then times by the temp, which is 299. <laughs> we got to solve for X, so I'm just going to divide by 0 0.0821, and then again by the 299. I'm going to do that on both sides. Uh, 0 0.0821, and then, whoop, and then 299. 2.99. <laughs> this gets canceled. This gets canceled. And now you're left with X, which is the total moles, right? So let's see. 0.96447 divided by 0 0.0821 divided again by 2.99. I get 0. Now, I'm not going to round, or I'll try to give a couple of more places after the decimal because this still isn't the full answer. So 0 0.039289, we'll call it. And that's now moles. And remember, that's total. Okay. So we still want to find out the partial pressure of Hg which means I just want to find out, you know, what's the pressure of HG, and they have the moles. Okay, so let's think. Hmm. When you're looking for partial pressures and you have a mole value, there's going to be another formula. Now, I need a little bit more room here, so what I'm going to do is, if you need to, pause the video, but the only thing that we basically need is we just need to know how many moles total we have. So I'm going to just put this down at the bottom. But as far as PV equals NRT and using that formula, that's, that's going. All right, so just pause the video if you need any of this, but I just need to get rid of it because I need to show you the other formula. Okay, so maybe I could get rid of this, and then I'll just erase a little bit at the top here. Okay. So... Now we just have to figure out a new formula. But if they're asking for partial pressures, so just a pressure component of an individual compound, we have a total pressure, 
we now have total moles, we can do our mole fraction and our pressure fraction relationship, which is this formula. So this is basically just setting up a relationship, a ratio between moles and pressure. And they're equal to each other because they're just ratios. So if you want to find a mole of a compound, you divide it by the total number of moles, and that would equal to the pressure of that compound divided by the total pressure. So it has to be the same compound on the top and the totals on the bottom. So let's see, do we know any of this information? Well, I'm, I'm going down the list here, and I do have a total pressure. So I know this value. This value is 0 0.96447. Let's see. Oh, I just found out the total number of moles. So I know this as well. See where we're going? So 39289. Now, let's see, moles of the compound and pressure of the compound. Well, the question was asking for what's the partial pressure, so we're looking for this. So this has to be x, which means somewhere in this information, we're going to find the moles of the compound. We have to find it. And oh, that's when they give us this information. So I'm just going to erase that this whole idea of like, you know, how we found the volume, because we don't need that anymore. And basically, all we would have to do, they told us that it was 2 times 10 to the negative 6 milligrams, but I just need to get it into moles. So that's all we got to do. Milligrams to moles. Don't even worry about the liters because we already took the 1 liter and used it for PV equals NRT. So if you want, just get rid of it. Or you can keep the liters on the bottom, but the, the, the math is not going to you know, harm it. Okay, so milligrams into moles. We got this. First, we got to go to grams, right? How do we go from milligrams to grams? That's easy. You just divide by 1,000. So 2 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 1,000. I get 2 times 10 to the negative 9th. And maybe now I'll put that down here. So now I have 2 times 10 to the negative 9th, and that's now grams of Hg. Let's go to moles, times by the ratio. Grams of Hg on the bottom. Mole of Hg up top. Using the periodic table, it's a mole to gram conversion of the same thing. So one mole equals whatever the mass is on the periodic table of Hg. And that's 200.6. Whoa, 200.6. Grams of Hg cancel, and now you're left with the moles of Hg. So this divided by 200.6. Really, really, really low number. 2 times a 2.27 with a lot of zeros, well, two zeros. So we'll just maybe say 0, 01 times 10 to the negative 12th. And that's moles. And maybe I'll put it over here. And that's moles of Hg. So now I have this number. Maybe I'll put that in blue. 9.9701 times 10 to the negative 12th. And now I'm ready to use my equation. So what I'm going to do is maybe I can just scooch this over a little bit. Beautiful. And now I'm going to say that I have something equal something 9.9701 times 10 to the negative 12th so that all goes on the top over here maybe i'll just extend this out and then this is divided by 0 0.039289 equals x over 0 0.96447 Cross multiplication to me, and then just solve for x, right? This times by this, and then x times by this, and then just solve. So I have 0.039289x equals 
whatever that is, 9.9701 times 10 to the negative 12th times 0 0.96447, and then just divide by that, 0 0.039289 on both sides. I'm going to try to put this all in at one shot into my calculator because I don't like to do any unnecessary rounding in the, uh, in the, in the, you know, intermediate steps. This will cancel it out. And now we're just left with X, which was the pressure of the compound, the pressure, partial pressure of HD. And this is 9.9701 times 10 to the negative, what was that? 12th. That looked like a 6 to me. I believe that's a negative 12. Times 0.96447 divided by 0 0.039289. I think I got it right. Right? 9.9701 times 10 to the negative 12 times this. Looks good to me. And sig fig purposes, uh, I mean, they only give you one sig fig here. So technically, you're only supposed to have one sig fig at the end, which would just be two. Two times 10 to the negative 10th. And this would be actually in ATM because I took the ATM value in here. Could you have put the 733 tor in here? Yeah, it doesn't matter. If you wanted, so maybe if I just pull this over. Whoop. So this would be an ATM, 2 times 10 to the negative 10th ATM. And if we just do the conversion, they didn't really necessarily say, but, you know, ATM to TOR is 7 times by 760. You would get 2 times 10 to the negative 7th now TOR if we do keep that one, uh, one sig fig. And there you go. So here are the two pressures of HG, of mercury, in ATM or TOR. And that's it. Whew, this one was a long one, guys, but hopefully you got it. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out, and I will see you all later. Okay, bye-bye.